Did you know that you can use imports and exports in the browser without using Webpack or Gulp or any kind of module bundler? If you knew this, then I'm happy for you and you can close this video right now. If you didn't know this, keep watching. Welcome to 33 JS Concepts Every JavaScript Developer Should Know. I am your host, Nicolas Se, and today we are going to look into immediately invoked function expressions and modules. Number eight. Let's start. What is an immediate function, immediate, immediately invoked function expression? Basically, it's a function that calls itself, and that's it. Very, very simple. Let's get started. So. I have this beautiful, beautiful um, thing here where I have a secret users array and I am console logging secret users array. So if I run this, you will see that here I have the users array, right? But this should be secret. Let me show you that how it's not secret. I'm gonna open this up into the page and now you will see that there is here on the console, ba -ba -ba, there is the array. Correct, correct. Now I, as the client, can type, try to look at some variables here, and one of them will be secret users. And as you can see here, I can see the secret users. I can also modify these secret users and say maybe push, I don't know, somebody. And now if I call secret users again, I have successfully affected this variable. Because this variable is public, basically. It's there, it's not private, it's there. It's in the browser and I can access it. Now, sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want to give the user some JavaScript, but you don't want him to be able to be changing your variables. It's not good. Sometimes it's not good. So how can you make it secret? Very, very simple. All you can do is put it inside of a immediately invoked function expression. What that means is put this thing, these two lines, inside of a function that calls itself. Let's check it out, how do we do that? Very, very easy. All we have to do is open parentheses, more size. All right, we open parentheses, and then we type function, right? Inside of this function, we press Command V or paste, we paste our code, and then we cannot forget, we call this function, capush. So what we're doing here basically is making a function, this one, making a function, and then calling that function. I know it looks kind of weird, but that's, that's what we have, okay? So now if I run this, I will have the same result on my console, which is I am console logging the secret users. But if I actually go to the page and I try to find or alter or look into secret users, as you can see here, secret users is not defined anymore. It's not on my scope. So the user cannot fuck around with your variable. Done. That is immediately invoked function. Because you're putting it here. So look at that. It's working. You will put basically all your application code here and nobody will be able to change it. We will execute it, of course, but nobody will be able to change it. That is an immediately invoked function. And if you're a sexy and handsome person, what you will do will be this. And I mean, it looks better, right? It looks better. Same, same. We're doing the same, same thing. All right. So that's part one, immediately invoked functions. And we're going to talk about namespaces because it's not something in JavaScript. But modules, that's where I got you. So, as I said at the beginning of the video, modules. Modules in JavaScript, and if you use Node.js, or if you used React, or if you used any kind of module bundler or whatever, also with Webpack and stuff, you are used to import-export. In Node.js, we're used to this, import-export. It's very sexy because it allows us to make small files and then import them on um, when we need them. That is great. The problem is this doesn't happen on the browser or didn't used to happen on the browser. And what we needed to do was to do something like Webpack or Gulp or something like that, that 
makes our modules together. Uh, yeah, that's basically the explanation. Now, how would you do the same thing without Webpack and Gulp or any kind of module bundler, just with basic vanilla JavaScript? Uh, let me show you how. Here we go. So bye bye e e i i f e immediately invoked function expression. Hello modules. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do make, create two files. One file is going to be I don't know up to the js very creative name i know and now here what we're going to do is we're going to just create some users some shit all right so i'm going to do users and these ones are not secret users but they're just users nico and we're going to do lean and dal and let's uh, that's it done all right and now i'm just going to do some functions all right and this function one will be add user all right and this will be a uh, const and i'm gonna do all right i'm gonna say that users is equals to spread operator users and the new user and the new user will come here if you're asking me nicolas why are you doing this i'm doing this because i try to work in an immutable way i know you could have done push but because i'm very into functional programming i try to work in an immutable way all right now let's just get the users get users here we go and we just return users no problem and let's delete a user so what we're gonna do is delete user perfect and now here we're gonna say users equals users that filter a user this is just basic js all right and we're gonna say the user we want to delete comes here user and here we're gonna do uh, a user not equals to user all right so this will delete my users and i i have it all here now i know i know what you're saying this is a very small application and I, I, I shouldn't use two files for this, but I'm gonna do it just to show you. Usually when you have big applications of vanilla JavaScript or just normal JavaScript, you're going to find yourself that you wanna make me, you wanna maybe break these files into small pieces. That's exactly what we're going to do. So I don't wanna do anything here. I just created everything, right? These functions, and now it's time to use them. Let's say that I don't wanna use them on this file. Let's move on to app that to JS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import users from app that JS. But you'll say, yo, this wouldn't work. Why? Because I haven't imported app to JS in index.html. So let's do that. I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste an app to JS. All right. Perfect. And now here, what I'm going to do is also First, I have to do export, all right? And let's do export everywhere. And here, let's do export as well. And here, export as well, all right? Now here, let's import maybe add user and get users, both of them, all right? So let's import add users and also get users users and get users user get users here we go all right so what i'm gonna do is i don't care about users actually but whatever doesn't matter let's do add user um autumn right let's console log get users correct and let's console log get users again. So what I should see should be the users that I have defined, then autumn, and then my users. All right, let's go. Push. I execute this and voila, there is an error. And this is when what we do in React, what we do in Node.js becomes different because what we see here is like, oh shit, the browser doesn't understand import and export. That's a problem. Here's when we will use Webpack. Here is when we will use something like Gulp. Now, 
with the new powerful ES6 modules, all we have to do is go back to our index. And in our index, when we are loading these two bad boys, we are going to tell the browser that these two bad boys are modules. So all we have to do, very important step, so watch carefully what I do. We are going to just type module. And just with this, just with this keyboard, the browser will handle these files as if they were modules. And just like if it was magic, when I run this bad boy again, it's working. The import export error has disappeared. And now I have the things that I wanted to have working for myself. Look at that beauty. I'm exporting. Let's not export this one. I'm importing and I am using functions without the need of Webpack, without the need for Gulp, without the need for any model bundler on the browser. I know this is normally in OGS, but this is very, very new on HTML on the browser. And look at that beauty. All we had to do was to put type module. Now, if you don't use type module, then everything will go to shit. And you don't want that. All right, look at that unexpected talking export. Thank you for watching. That's it for 33JS modules for today for, uh, concepts. Number eight, finished. Here we go. Number nine, message queue and event loop. See you on the next video. Tell your friends, tell your family, ES modules for the win. Bye-bye.